wanted to do a very quick video on what I've learnt about animals in terms of raising them for um, self-sufficiency. 18 months in, give or take, to our self-sufficiency project. And I'm not quite there yet, but we're trying. And um, there's a lot I've learnt because although I've kept chickens and things like that in the past, I haven't ever kept livestock in so far as, you know, bigger animals. And I've never really raised anything with the idea of eating it. Um, and yeah, there's a hell of a lot I've learned. So I'm just gonna walk and talk. And uh, so when we first moved here, our first summer slash autumn, we had just incredible weather. It was beautiful sunshine. It was probably one of the hottest, driest summers and autumns um, on record. Now, we didn't have any animals at this point. We uh, went through the first winter without any animals and or we acquired them sort of throughout that winter, our first batch of animals. And then we've come into this autumn and winter and it has been quite the opposite. It's been one of the wettest autumns and winters probably on record. We, we've literally had about four or five dry days since September and it's currently um, early March. Um, so this time last year, this paddock behind me was just beautiful green grass. And as you can see now, it's, it's just mud and all it's got on there is just four geese in that massive paddock. Um, the same applies everywhere really. You know, everywhere we've got animals is mud and Last year it was beautiful green grass, and this year it's just not. And um, the biggest thing we've learned from that really is just next year, this year, we're, we're gonna have a winter plan. I think if we'd planned around the potential for this weather, I mean, you can see my poor hens back there, we're moving them every few days to try and give them fresh ground, and they're due moving again because they churn it up so quickly. But um, I think, I focus so much on the garden and, and food production and trying to do too many things at once that I didn't uh, finish fencing this area of paddock. So this area of paddock really has been a bit wasted this winter when we could have sorely done with it. Hey Rhubarb, this is my daughter's pet sheep. Absolutely useless, serves no function. Uh, apart from pleasing my daughter, of course. Uh, so that's something else we've learned, you know, uh, if your daughter's fish dies, don't buy her a sheep. Yeah, one of the key things that's worked really well is um, the, we've always had chickens. So we, we increased the number of chickens we had to a point where we, were, we obviously were generating far more eggs than we needed as a family. And um, as a result, I built probably within six months of being here, a little little egg shop on the side of the road. We have regular customers who come here every day or every week. And the small amount of money generated from selling the eggs pays for all the animal feed. So that's something I think anyone thinking of, of doing this sort of thing should, should do. They should start with getting the hens in place because that's the sort of in, in, in instant income stream that's really, really easy to set up. So it's as simple as this. It's a little egg shop with a money box. We've had the money stolen twice. Um, we've, we're learning from our mistakes. It doesn't bother me. Um, one of the very first things I did when I built it is I put up a sign with the price, um, they're relatively cheap anyway, uh, £1.20 for six eggs. And I put a sign up that said, uh, if you can't afford £1.20, pay whatever you can afford. And what that does is it takes away any feeling of being wronged if the money's not right. You know, you've, you've made it clear that people are to pay what they can afford. And, uh, 
it alleviates you of any need to worry about the money. The, mo the money that's there is the money that's there. And that's fine, I'm very comfortable with that. So this, this originally was our goat paddock, right the way through. You can see at the far end, that's the bit the geese are on. Um, and then there's, there's this bit at the end with a gate in the middle. The idea being the more different spaces you can shut your animals in, the better to give the ground a break. Um, so that, that house has got a door either side. And then just to the left of it, you can't see it too well, but there's a, a little stand that my goats go up on for me to milk. Eggs is obviously very, very easy. That's the first thing. Um, the geese there, they provide eggs as well. We sell the fertilised goose eggs to people like ourselves who want to put eggs in an incubator and have their own geese. So the geese, really the geese are here because I love the geese and eventually I want them to keep the grass down in the orchard. But um, it's important they pay for themselves, which they do. There are three animals I think that are really, really important if you're thinking of doing this and you're not a vegetarian or a vegan. And the first of which is chickens, which I've spoke about. And the second of which is goats. Now, we've currently got three goats, three nannies or does, and they're all a great milking variety. Um, we've got one Alpine and two Toggenbergs, and they're so friendly. They'll probably come up to me in a minute. Um, but the reason goats are so important to me is because they provide us with milk, cheese, cream, ice cream, all those dairy products, but also meat. So every year we'll breed the females. And of course the kids, if they're female, they might go into the, the milking herd or, um, or not. And the males will be obviously, eventually for the table. I absolutely love my goats and I also love the kids, the kids that come along. They get treated as well as any pet. We give them everything we possibly can. I'm very aware that the ground here isn't perfect at the minute, it's a bit wet, but I do the best I can for them. Um, they have got a nice dry hut in the middle there. Um, but the reason goats for dairy instead of cows for me is twofold. Firstly, in terms of per square meter, you're gonna get nearly as much, if not more milk from the right goats than you will a family milking cow. Um, you've got a lot less money tied up at any one time and they do a bit less damage to the grass. They can eat a much wider variety of rubbish. What, what, what we would call rubbish, you know, your brambles and things like that. They're gonna, all of our hedges, hedging and All of our hedging and weeds, not all of them, but a lot of them, is goat food. So they're a great multi-purpose animal. Um, the sheep there, as I say, we got her as, a, as an orphaned lamb. And uh, it was a bit of an experiment really for myself. I'm considering, if we, if we feel that we've got enough space, I might run some lambs again for meat, but I don't think it's something we're going to carry on with. The, the, the sheep is a, a pet, a family pet now, and the least said about that, the better. <laughs> so the third animal, and this is purely for meat, is pigs. Now, for us, pigs are great because we've got this wood which forms the edge of our property, and it's basically like pig heaven. Um, it's half ash, half oak, so what we do, we don't breed pigs. We buy in what are called weaners. So uh, when the young pigs are weaned from their mum, we're gonna do three a year. And that will literally be, along with the other things we've got going on and a few trades that we can do, that will be us completely meat self-sufficient. Self so that's a family of five. So we're talking three pigs, two goats, um, and maybe the odd chicken, goose, uh, combination. D depends kind of what happens here because we also have pheasants that come through that um, I can take with the air rifle and 
bits and bobs. So um, there's lots of lots of other options we can use to supplement that. But uh, one of the reasons pigs are so great is because if you're smart about it, you can feed them for almost nothing. So there's two fruit and vegetable shops near us and um, we basically collect all of their leftover fruit and veg that they can't sell. So every week or so I'll go in and I'll collect two big dustbin liners, two big dustbins full from each one. Um, and that makes up half of the pig's feed for three pigs, certainly. Um, the remainder is made up from scraps from the kitchen, but also we live very close to a bakery and the leftover bread that they can't sell or the leftover dough that they, you know, is, is too much that, you know, once they've mixed a batch of dough, the leftovers when they finish making their bread, they stick it all in the oven at the end of the day to form these massive, massive chunks of bread that they're not selling. They're just doing it because it's easier for them to dispose of that way. We go and collect them for them. And that again goes towards the animal feed. So obviously the chickens take a decent chunk of that, but also the, um, the pigs do. There's our, another set of chickens back there. So these chickens, they're all ex-battery hens. So they've all had quite a nasty life, really, living in the um, factory farming world. So they've had a horrible year or so, but then when they get here, um, they really do have the, the highest possible quality of life that they can. So those are my, those are my thoughts, really. Um, as I say, I've only been doing this just over 18 months and I've learned a lot but I've learned a tiny fraction compared to what I've still to learn so I'm not trying to tell anyone who's more experienced than me that they're doing it wrong or that I've got it all figured out I certainly haven't but these are the things that I've sort of come to come to feel after my time doing it so far so This is some more hens. These are my wife's hens and they are hilarious. So my wife, you'll see there's a couple of battery hens in there that they're still laying eggs, but they're a bit poorly. They've got dodgy legs or something like that. My wife's quite the, quite the animal doctor. So she looks after, you see, you see Hopper over there. If you watch, she's got a poorly leg. That's why she's in here, sort of quarantined from the uh, the other batteries. Because these, even though these Brahmas are much bigger, they're actually quite soft. But these are my wife's hens, so um, she breeds a few of these and sells the chicks. They sell for, at the right time of year, anything up to sort of 15 pound a, a hen. And uh, again, this all supplements the, the running costs. So, what we're trying to do obviously is get to a point where we're self-sufficient but equally trying to get to the point where the um, financial input is as small as possible so a hell of a lot of what we've got here we've got from free cycle or uh, places like that all the animal housing i built myself obviously we've had to pay for some of the wood but again a lot of it we've we've got from free cycle um, yeah so those are my thoughts if you find these videos valuable, there's several ways you can support them. The easiest one is just to like it. And uh, after that, please do subscribe to our channel. Um, leave a comment down below, let us know what you think. Um, always interested in feedback. And please share it. Thank you very much. See you again.